Well, that was a pretty direct, non-direct question. Uh, which which project? The films, the television network, or something else? Well, I would say maybe perhaps the television network because that incorporates content. Oh, absolutely. Uh, if we can pull it together in time, the launch date is June Where, 1st. Stephen knows nothing, so you have yeah. to go from the top. I am. The launch date is June 1st. Uh, from the Summer Olympics in Rio de Janeiro to do um, a large concert on the beach during the actual Olympics for the entire time of the Olympics to launch a new music television channel of EDM. But I want to do sub-stages where there's a main stage which is like pop EDM for the main channel, but do sub changes uh, if we can pull it together in time where there's like the metal EDM with rock and, and stuff so like that. But that's part of the television. You said television first. I said, I said network. Right. That is part of the network launch. So what is with the aspect of the JP Morgan stuff? What is that? Um, Stephen doesn't know anything, so I would say go for it. <coughs> I've been in discussions with J.P. Morgan for years to figure out where our sweet spot to work together would be. And their bottom line is they won't do anything under a quarter of a billion dollars um, because they underwrite studios. And so I went back and pitched them on launching seven television networks over five years, and they proved the concept and said, bring us the business plan for funding. So um, I had asked them for $10 billion to roll out seven networks, seven main channels, and then sub-channels underneath them. $10 billion? Yeah. In debt. So $10 billion in debt would be $1 billion in a bond or an asset? Is that the way it works, or what? I, you know what? I don't know that I can speak on that authoritatively. What they're talking about it is it's debt equity, and I pull it down as I need it. And it's paid back as a note over time. It's not investment, it's debt. I didn't want investment. I don't want to go public. I don't want a board of directors that I have to answer to and shareholders and all that shit. I'm not interested. I've already done that before. It bores the fuck out of me. So, Ken, Stephen, can you explain to me what's the difference between investment and debt equity then? And why doesn't debt, debt equity uh, need the same setup as with investment culture? Good question. Well phrased. Mixing a lot of terms, right? And debt and equity can mean different things. It's hard to do a deal without any equity in it. Well, we have tons of IP, so we have tons of equity already in. We have numerous films, we have television shows, but we have a lot already invested into it. So we have a lot of we have a lot of equity already invested and it's creative creative equity. Well right? that's still IP. And I have funds willing to back me out of China and out of the Middle East. So whether they do it or not, I still have funds available to me through foreign funds. So either way we're gonna do it, it's a question of putting together the team in time. And if we don't pull off Summer Olympics, then we'll just roll it back to the next major event. Except I will not do a Winter Olympics. Fuck that. Not so interested. When you're talking about music networks? Or well, the first one would be music. The next one would be news and information. Then a health and wellness channel. Um, there's going to be a comedy channel. There's going to be a... Uh, a film channel like an HBO, and there's going to be a television series channel, so those are the outlay of the seven. And then sub channels off of that. So we'll be doing film, but we're gonna be producing it several years ahead. So we own the IP when we debut it. Um, so it's only original content? Only original content on anything we're doing, yeah. Okay. Even the music will be original content. I mean, we've already been working with bands and artists on pulling this together. 
for some time now. And that's part of the reason I'm meeting with the Gordy family because they're, they're willing to jump on board and help do an ENR and pull in more talent for us quickly <coughs> and help launch the label and the publishing. Plus, they asked me to do some documentaries with them. Um, people that I put in place, I, I don't want to run the day-to-day -day shit. Um, I've, I've run broadcast networks for years and I, and I know who the players are, so I'm just plugging players in place to run the parent group and then each, each sub-network is individually right. O&O. It's like John um, You are, or like ABC or Disney, where you have the parent structure and then the infrastructure right. is below it, so you're insulated. But when you're doing reality TV, it's not necessarily production value, it's so much cheaper than when you did film you're doing... Yeah, but we're not looking to do cheap shit or, or reality you know, TV. If you're, if you're Budget. You don't have yeah, we do. CGI. Yes, we do. There's, there's so much other aspects. You have to understand, I've done like Live Aid, Farm Aid, Rock for the America. I've done major concert events, so I know how to do this shit in my sleep. And I have a team of people who work with me on this who have done major events. So for us, yes, we do have wardrobe, we have green room, we have the highest security on the fucking planet because we can't afford somebody to be taken out during an event. Oh no, we're not fucking around with this. We're bringing in logistics people, people from the government on both sides. We're not fucking around. But so, but you seem to be uh, focusing on, on the, media, the music media aspect. Are you saying that there's seven other channels too? Is that just one of the platforms? That's one of the platforms. That's why I said there's so the news and information. One, one of the ones you're more passionate about, is it? Which one? Is music. Well, I started in music. Even before I started in news, I started in music. And EDM is a huge international format right now. And we can do subfractions of the format. We're already in development on, on stuff in different genres. I know, but I just don't like talking about that too much because we know already that Oh, we're going to go head to head with them. I gave them a chance to work with us and they fucked around with it too long. They would never sign contracts. So that's fine. We'll just go head to head with them and actually probably bury them. So with the other channels, um, like, so if, it, if, if you're saying 10 billion over how you're going to roll it out over seven years? Five years. Over five years? Yeah. Some years we'll be rolling out two networks a year. Two networks a year. Yeah. Where will these networks be? Worldwide. No, but like, is it satellite? Satellite, internet, television broadcasts. So straight to phones, is it going to be like an Apple TV or? It'll be broadcast to the internet as well as to satellite and broadcast terrestrial. It'll be multi platform. Because to just do a single MSO network anymore won't hold up. If you don't have all the cross-platforming stuff, it's it's doomed to fail quickly. Okay, so what about then? Where, where are the costs in launching a network? Well, at a billion dollars per network and surplus, I think we've more than covered it. If it costs more than a billion dollars to launch a television network, we're fucking up. I've launched networks before. It doesn't cost anywhere close to that. I've done global satellite networks for CBS, for ABC. I, I know what these costs are. That's why I'm already pulling these numbers. We know what our hard costs are. We knew what it was going to be to do a concert out of, out of Morasses two years ago. If it hadn't been for fraud, we would have done a, an event out of Morasses two years ago. We already pulled all the numbers, the trucks, everything. We already have these numbers done. Now that we're in an era with a broadcaster on retreat, Retreat from what? Is there a war I miss? Yeah. Hmm. Okay, what are they in retreat from? Yeah, there's things like YouTube. There's a lot of... Oh, of course. There's all kinds of mediums. There's competition. Right. In so many areas, and we all know about cord cutting. But we don't want to do anything under $2 million anyway, so we're not doing chump change productions. Two million is our floor of anything we'd even look at, and at that we have to own 51% of the IP or we're not interested. Because any deals we're doing, we're doing a studio deal. So we're doing the output, the distribution to theaters, television, film, and all formats, so we're not fucking around. We have to have at least 51% of IP or we're not even gonna mess with it. 
Because if we don't have a controlling interest, we can't control the network. Believe me, we've thought this out for years. I've been working with people for years on this. No, I'm not questioning that. I'm just trying to understand. It's, um, it's very complex. We plan to cross-platform in all latitudes. So we can hit phones, we can hit handhelds, we can hit any device from, from handheld to IMAX at any time. Because we shoot everything in IMAX quality anyway. We're not shooting it in low res on anything we shoot. So anything we have is already scalable. I mean, just on rainforest shit alone, we have enough to launch a whole rainforest channel. Oh, that's the channel I forgot to mention, the humanitarian channel. We're actually going to launch a humanitarian channel. I really don't care about viewership so much as I care about getting messages out. But doesn't it, does it, is that where it dates back, like, freedom of speech and something like CBS? If CBS aren't pulling in the ratings, they're fine. Who fires them or who gets them out of the way? Like, who would they, would you be your own boss that you'd have to answer to, or is it the banks? Do they want to see you perform and to hit particular numbers? And are they going to ask for key people to be in? All they've asked is bring in the plan. See, I've already done large offerings before I did a $50 million offering with Merrill Lynch years ago. So I've done large offerings. Um, I just got to finish putting it together. What's the largest offering you guys have ever done? So what about a children's channel? That didn't answer my question. I said, what's the largest offering you guys have ever done? The largest offering I got was the principal. Well, yeah, that, would, that would be a good offering. idea. Or any type of offering, private, qualified investor, or otherwise. Okay. Yeah, I mean, so I understand what you're talking about. I mean, I've done, you know, very large scale stuff for everything from green technologies to automotive. Um, a lot of times the reason they fall apart is shitty business plans or egos or both. <coughs> oh my Christ, Jesus. Some of these fucking people just have this sense of entitlement that is ginormous. Thank you. Absolutely. And I've run network broadcast facilities for years, ABC, NBC, CBS. I've worked on all the studio lots. So I understand large scale budgets and deployments probably better than most. Um, there is not a network or a major institution or government of significance around the planet that I haven't consulted at some point including high-level intelligence. But, like I said, sometimes they pull you through the back door without asking. When you get those phone calls from the bureau and they go, so tell us what you know about, and then I go, you know, well, but you have people, and they go, yeah, but, you know, here's six federal violations you're making if you even hang up the phone and don't answer this question. They're not friendly about it at all. Uncle Sam is really fucked up. It's only taken me 47 years to get him to finally agree to declassify my story so I can actually go make a film or two about it because it's going to be epic. <laughs> and the agreement was if they're a public figure, I can fuck with them as long as it's the truth. And if they're a private citizen, I got to get their permission. I got to change the names to protect the innocent. Those are easy contingencies to work with. I can handle that part. It's just the fact that they finally agreed to declassify. Because you don't start giving up government secrets without their permission. They get really cranky about that. Have you ever had to do something like that? No. Oh, believe me, it's... Ah, <sighs> exhaustive. There's a good word. See, I do a lot of voice work, including government intel for the Allied Nations and U.S. defense, etc. And so when I was breached on October 28th and let the FBI know and DOD and a lot of other fucks, they sat on it. It wasn't until I threatened to go public about it that they decided there might be a problem that I was linked to Paris and Moscow and Riverside. I was really thrilled to know that, especially since I let them know a month and a half before the incidents happened that security was breached. 
because I have everything from Bangladesh to Israel to Turkey. Pick a government, I do their missile defense, their jets, everything, their training manuals. So they got the audio, the video, and the scripts. They, Taliban knows exactly every fucking thing we know and more. Of course, we also train them, but just saying, us and seven other nations subsidize them to go after bin Laden and their CIA gone rogue. That's ISIS. Our government's a little fucked up. <laughs> of course, those planes that disappeared from Malaysia, they didn't disappear. We know exactly what happened to them. We just don't want to tell people because it scared the fuck out of anyone from doing airline travel because the Taliban took them up to 40,000 feet, turned the air off, everybody died instantly. They landed in the Middle East, they've dumped the bodies and they've converted them over to warplanes. That's what happened to those two fucking planes, and we know it, and we're just not saying it, because who the fuck would want to fly if all of a sudden the plane can be taken as a fucking war plane? There's a lot of crap going on in the world that most people have no fucking clue about, but I do, because I read the intel, and so I know what the fuck we're doing in every point of the world, probably better than the goddamn president. And the Justice Department actually kicked me up above them under whistle protection because they think this shit needs to start coming out. So at some point, I'll be doing some films about me, just because I can, in addition to all this other fun and frivolity. I've already served three life sentences in foreign prisons. Thank God the longest one was only five days. And I can never go to Mexico again in this lifetime because neither side wants the video of the cartel loading large cargoes of drugs onto U.S. warships. They're not happy with that footage and both sides have made it really fucking clear to me the U.S. will disown me and Mexico will kill me if I ever cross the border again. I tried it three times, I couldn't get away with it. So if you're looking for a hot film to do, go get the footage in Tijuana that they took from me three times. That would be fun. You could also get your dick shot off, but I'm just telling you, I got out three times from federal prison. Of course, the last time I also had to implore to get France and Canada to fucking yell at the U.S. State Department because they were actually going to leave me there after the second pass. They weren't even coming in to get me. So I started calling other people I had favors with. Hello, I'm in a federal prison in Tijuana. And guess what? I'm up on life charges for videotaping federales loading drugs onto U.S. warships. No, I wasn't doing the drugs. They were. Ugh. I've done a lot of undercover news over the years around the world. I had ABC drop me all expenses paid on a free trip through the mid Central America in the 70s, only to find out they dropped me into the middle of a fucking war zone. <laughs> Assholes. Because no one else wanted to take the assignment. It's been an interesting life, that's for sure. Is he asleep now? Okay. I didn't want to bore you. So what about you? What's the most dangerous thing you've ever done? Okay, that's fair. So, what about our... Where are you from originally? Because you sound like you're from Canada. You always say, what yeah, about... I was, I was born in Berlin. And where? In Berlin, New Hampshire. Well, how come you always sound like you're from Canada when you go about... Okay, I'm just asking. That's a good question. Absolutely. Yeah, that doesn't mean I still can't work for them. I can still do voice work. Just because I own the networks doesn't mean I can still do voice so, work. Of like, course, with all the shit I've got going on, I've been doing very little voice work lately. I should do a lot more. So are you doing, like, when you say a TV channel like HBO, yeah. or is it like Showtime? Uh, HBO, Showtime, Skinamax. Um, I don't care about the content as long as... It has a positive message, the underdog always wins, um, and there's no gratuitous sex or violence. Those are my parameters for anything we program. No gratuitous sex or violence. You can show before, after, whatever. Um, you don't need to show every bullet imploding in someone's face. So is there television adverts? 
or film. We won't do anything with gratuitous violence or such. No, but we do. Is there television adverts? Are there are there adverts in between? What do you mean? I don't understand is the there question. Like next week? Oh, absolutely. No, these will be. It depends on which network. Like the like the movie channel and the television series channel may be subscription based. I we, that's down the road, three to five years. But why is that down the road? For because the, the, the time to shoot the content for all the, the content to get catalog. When you're doing 24-7 broadcast, you have to have a lot of catalog. So you have to go in prior... And in the meantime, we can still be releasing this stuff theatrical and then bring it back for worldwide premiere on the network. So, so it still can be released during that three to five year window. It just won't hit television until the network's online. So you're saying that the primary... It's a distribution platform. It's meant content. to be an entire studio from television networks to film to distribution, publishing, record distribution. I've already had offers from Sony Red to pick up all our distribution globally and or a private label. I've had offers from Motown. I have people making me offers to pick up my stuff because people know I produce multi-platinum stuff. When I get into a studio and start producing bands, I come up with multi-platinum records. I have the platinum and gold on my walls to prove it at home. You know, with major acts. Anybody that's published with their name on my sites, I've worked with every one of them. I don't publish the name of a band unless I've actually worked with them. So, apart from bands, because we come predominantly from... So, what are the... What's the... Well, we do a lot of celebrity stuff. If you check our, our other stuff, you know, I did 300 episodes of television oh last year alone. Celebrity is a culture. Yeah, well, I've done documentaries, comedy. Celebrity culture or driven. It's a culture. It's not necessarily. Well, but for global distribution. How do emerging artists get their start? They do. No, they do. You, you, you blend them in with other award winning stars so they get the notoriety. It's a blending. You blend them in. So are you just going to be paying at, uh, at obscene fees to, get, to poach talent to come on your network? Or? Why would I have to pay obscene fees? Because Then stay there. Then stay there. Then stay there. There's enough talent out there. I don't need to chase the bus. I have major talent already coming to me, offering to just get on a project. Uh, well, because I know the international sales people really well, and I know. Right. Yeah. Exactly. But you have to understand, I've worked with some of the... I, I was one of the people who pioneered research and metadata at the network, so I already know all of this. The, I ran the research departments of the it's networks I was at. Know, but shows can be pulled after one season. Even Family Guy was pulled, and then it got back on the air. You know what I mean? And, and so your point is... Gets, no, and so your point is... You know. So how do you, add, how do you assist people... Virally, you blow it up. I'm good at blowing things up. I'm very viral. There's 42 million references to me as of a week ago, and probably 37 of them are directly at mine. According to AT&T and Facebook and some other people, I'm searched daily by 50 to 100 million people looking for data with me in it every day. I have a huge international following. So the fact that I'm launching networks is just going to get viewers right out of the box because people already follow me on major platforms, YouTube, Facebook. No, but a network person, it's like Walt Disney. Walt Disney's characters grew yeah. up made Walt Disney. Walt right. Disney had a great innovation and he was a, he was a visionary. Right. But it wasn't necessary. People watched it after there was a proven archive and record and he's... But I have... Of I have 47 years of people watching my stuff over the years. I know, but you don't have the generations of, like... I disagree. I wholeheartedly disagree. I'm in video games. I'm in all kinds of stuff. People know my work for 47 years. Yeah, but it, it's, it's probably like more like critical work. Mm, I don't agree. You should probably do some Googling. Yeah, actually, you should do some Googling and find out what I really do. Wait, wait, so children? I do everything. Animation, video games, apps. I'm on everything. And voice. Not just voice. I do on-camera work. So voice and camera work, right? Whatever. 
what's your point? I'm not sure where you're driving yet. You're, you're just kind of drilling, but you're not you're not going anywhere. What's your point? You're driving to a point. I don't know what it is. So demographic, psychographic, what are you looking for? Okay, capturing content and We already know how to do that. I've been doing this for years. Okay, so I'm going to take it back to film and television. All right, where do you want to go? listening. I don't know what the question is. And we don't have to solve this all on this drive. We it's can... not about solving it. It's about... If I knew we were getting this in-depth, I would have brought a book for you to look through, which I didn't. Uh, uh, it would have been really helpful, but oh well. I'll show it to you when we get back to L.A. See, I've already done very large-scale offerings, and according to projections by outside third parties, just on one project I did in the 90s, my net worth at 2,000 was estimated to be at 4 billion. What's that? My net worth. I'm, I'm With the IP I invented at that point, the residuals were were estimated to be at four billion by two thousand. Were they patented IP? Oh well, yeah, I've done all kinds of patent and trademark shit over the years. So with, 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 has this been has this stuff been patented? Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I it was part of the first do of a video streaming on the internet. We helped pioneer that with the University of Illinois, Mosaic, and my company. We pioneered that technology. We did the Mars Pathfinder mission. We've done major worldwide broadcasts. We have the A team of players. People who work on my team are the same people who work with Cameron and ABC. We use the best. We don't take prisoners. We don't have to. In fact, one of uh, my guys who's done everything from Mighty Joe Young to Fifth Element and Titanic is meeting us up in, uh, in Vegas, Jeff Holm who's worked with me for, uh, since the 90s. <coughs> John Guerin at ABC, I just talked to earlier today, or yesterday, and he's coming on board to consult us worldwide. Brad Bedford, who did Arbitron and Nielsen worldwide for years, is coming on board to be a chief operating officer. I'm bringing in people from Walt Disney Company. I'm bringing in major players. I'm bringing in major record label players, people who worked for Tommy Mottola and Sony. I'm bringing in the heavy hitters that I've worked with for the last 40 years, the last 50 years. People I know who will be honest with me and get the shit done right the first time, I don't have to think about it. I don't need to train people how to do what I need done. I just need to bring in the right people who already know how I want it done. That's what I need to do. And I already know who most of those players are. Like if I could pull Rod Perth away, I'd have him run the whole network. But I gotta get you know in touch with He runs Nappy. He is the head of Nappy. What's Nappy? National Association of Television Program Executives. It's a worldwide organization, and he runs it. But I, I knew Rod when he was running Late Night at CBS, and then when he ran USA Networks. I've known Rod uh, since the 80s. So that's the type of people I'm bringing in, people I have history with. People that I know, I can bank at J.P. Morgan or in the Middle East or China because these people have long track records of winning. And then I can go around the world and do what I do best, create content and make line calls <laughs> and get away from all the day-to-day -day bullshit because I'm really tired of the day-to-day -day bullshit, honestly. I want somebody else to handle that. What? The day-to-day -day bullshit. I don't want the stress of day to day. I want pre scheduled appointments, pre scheduled bookings, pre scheduled anything so I know when my downtime is so I can actually keep my health in, in track versus running all the time so I'm so exhausted I'm constantly going in hospitals for pneumonia or exhaustion. <coughs> I don't want to keep living that way. That's, that's a good way to shorten your life. I'm being sick all the time. I'd like to be healthy. 
So I need to regulate my schedule, not the world, because the world will run me fucking ragged. There's constantly another party, another event, another something somebody would like me to appear at. I don't have to look for them. They find me. But that's exhausting. I mean, doing 12 red carpets in a night was fun once. But when people started wanting us to do it on a regular basis, it was like, come on, give me a fucking break. That's work. I want to be paid if I'm doing that many appearances in a night. Because I'd rather have somebody else driving if I'm doing that many appearances in a night. I don't want to have to be the one driving to 12 different locations and dealing with all the people on the highway who are already too intoxicated to be behind the wheel anyway. Of course... I have a tendency to drive really fast, so when I can find a hole in traffic, I usually take it. Ken Davidian from Barat and a ton of other movies will never ride alone in a car with me again off a movie set because I scared the piss out of him doing 110 miles an hour to 127 miles an hour on certain streets where he was crying. Okay, what? So, how, how about, uh, are you saying that there's a particular interest? Is that why you're pushing the music aspect first? Or what about a film, a film network? Well, that's part of the deployment, but again, that's three to five years down, so we have time to put together all the content, because so, I want all original content. We're not buying old content. But are you going to end up buying sales and distribution companies that already that's that's part of the model we're looking at we're already where but but again if it's old catalog i don't want it for the network i don't want it for the network if it's old content i'm not putting old content up on the network it's all new content all new ip that's what's going to make it cutting edge because it'll be all new it won't be rehashed anything well i already told you that that no gratuitous violence, no gratuitous sex. So yeah, but so can you can you state the genre then? On which? On on the film channel, if that's the case, or how can you have a film channel with all one genre because it's a film channel or it's, it's just a Nobody genre said it channel. had to be one genre. Okay. Film channel doesn't have to be one genre. HBO isn't one genre. Okay. HBO has everything. But we're also launching a comedy channel so we don't need to dilute the film channel with a lot of comedy. Because a comedy channel isn't one of the channels. <coughs> so why dilute a channel? Keep it more clean. Keep the comedy on comedy. Keep the comedy content on a comedy channel. You don't need to cross it over to a movie channel. Keep the movie channel for movies. But aren't everything with video on demand these days, series seem to be very popular and people like being able to watch... <laughs> well, yeah, but that's on the subscription model. You charge extra for that. You don't give that data, that metadata up for free. So do you think that in the world of possibilities that Snapchat is going to end up extending into movies and films 